Ladies and gentlemen, you just met Hayaval. Tommy Waller, president and founder of Hayaval, found his life's mission in the mountains of Israel, in the Judean hills. Tommy was born into a Southern Baptist family, the grandson of a minister. Tommy and his wife Sherry, of 35 years, have 11 children, five daughter-in-laws, two son-in-laws, 23 grandchildren, and the 24th, thanks to Victoria, soon on the way, momentarily, actually. Before founding Hyavel, Tommy enjoyed a corporate management position at FedEx. Tommy traveled to Israel for the first time in 2004 with some friends on business. It was there that he first saw the vineyards and read the prophet's verses that are now being fulfilled by Tommy and Hyavel. That was the beginning of Tommy's travels back and forth with his family. Hayaval is the only non-Jewish volunteer organization in Samaria, in the Shamron. <laughs> Hayaval is recognized and works closely with rabbinic authority on Har Bracha, Rabbi Malamed. Hayaval offers Christian volunteers the opportunity to see and understand their Bible from the original culture and context. Hayaval began by helping one vineyard owner in his fields. Today, it is the largest volunteer organization in the Shamron, having hosted over 2,000 Christian volunteers from 19 different countries. The volunteers harvested 400 tons of grapes last year, and they have increased wine production in the Shamron by 800%. They harvest on Har Bracha, the Mount of Blessing, in Shiloh, Ofra, Dolov, and Tsagot. Tommy courageously advocates for the Christian community to support the Jewish community in their God-given role as light onto the world. Tommy doesn't just nurture vineyards. Under Tommy's direction, Hayaval continues to train its volunteer force to engage in Israel advocacy in their churches, in their state houses, and in the countries from which they come. It has become a bridge between the Christian nations and the heartland of Israel. On a personal note, I have come to know Tommy both here in the U.S. and in Israel. Every time I visit Tommy in Israel, I call him from usually Tel Aviv, Yerushalayim, and I ask him, where do you want to meet? And he always says, well, I never crossed the green line, so you're going to have to come to the Shamron. <laughs> his humility and kindness is as great as his devotion to God and the spreading of the emet, the truth, about Israel and the biblical foundations upon which it is based. Ladies and gentlemen, our dear friend, Tommy Waller. Let me just breathe for a second. What, a, uh, what an honor and a privilege this is um, to take off my overalls and put on a, a tie. <laughs> to come here tonight was a, uh, quite the chore, but uh, what, what, a, what an honor, obviously. I didn't pick 400 tons of grapes by myself. Um, I had a lot of help, and, uh, and, and I'm very thankful uh, for all those uh, that made the decision to support the Jew Jewish communities of, of Judea and Samaria and to walk in this wonderful place that I've experienced, and, um, and I'm very thankful, thankful to be in this position. I'm going to read this. I told Sarah I would be very short. Uh, so I wrote this out. My wife is very uh, surprised at that. But, um, but I just want to say, 14 years ago, my, my life was dramatically changed when I was privileged to stand uh, in a vineyard on Mount Gerizim, the Mount of Blessing, with Nir Levi, a religious Jew. By the way, I'd never met a religious Jew before in my life. Uh, that's, that's an odd thing to say 14 years later uh, after being and living uh, with the beautiful Jewish community of Har Bracha. But Nir was a religious Jew and, and I was meeting him for the first time. As I stood there and, read, and he read to me, read to me a, a one who had grown up in a Bible-believing home, uh, a, uh, uh, as David said, a, a son of a Baptist preacher, 
he read to me the prophecy of Jeremiah. And he said uh, in Jeremiah 31, verse 5, it says that you shall yet plant vines on the mountain of Samaria. And this was a Jew who was speaking this prophecy from outside of Israel, dreaming of one day that there would be vineyards planted on the mountains of Samaria. And as a farmer from Tennessee who grew up in a Christian home, I had never experienced the touchable reality of prophecy. And forgive me if I get really spiritual here, but to the Gentile community, to the Christian community, the non-Jewish community, this is a very spiritual thing that's happening. And I know it's sometimes awkward to the Jewish community to accept that reality after 2,000 years of, of a horrible narrative. Things are changing. Things are changing. I was experiencing the first time the dreams of the prophets, where the Bible was coming, the words, the very literal words that I had grown up reading actually were, were touchable realities. They were something that I could see, something that I could feel. Today, I wake up most mornings with, uh, with hundreds of volunteers uh, to an undeniable proof of God's existence. The Jews have returned to the promised land and the land has responded. The land can only awaken with the touch of a Jewish farmer. By this time in history, the prophet Isaiah says, the farmer will join. Uh, but, it, but at this time in history, the prophet Isaiah says that the foreigner will join the Jew and be your plowman and your, and your um, vine dresser. And this is important because we, uh, it's a new thing that's happening. It's a new reality. It's not, it's not the, uh, the way it was uh, when, when Nehemiah was building the temple. But now we have a new thing that, that non-Jews are actually seeing this reality. They're waking up. Theology is changing right before our eyes. And we're able to join ourselves, join ourselves with the Jewish communities of Israel and to work with them and to stand with them. It is an honor and a privilege. I'm thankful for Jews like Sarah Stern and Dr. David Green. I'm also thankful for Maureen Ancy, who um, was a dear friend, a blessing who, who just uh, several months before she died, she was on the Mount of Blessing with me and the volunteers. And what a, what a representation she was to this organization. And I'm very thankful for her and what she, uh, what she meant to me personally. The encouragement that she gave to me was very powerful. And I'm thankful for your friendship as well. There's a big... Uh, there's a battle. There's an obvious battle for the heartland of Israel. There's a, there's a, um, a battle that's, that is... Uh, the UN is, 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 is giving to us, is, is showing us almost on a daily, uh, a daily basis. The UN continues its shameless attack against God through now hundreds of resolutions against the occupation targeted specifically at the promise, uh, at the promise to Abraham, the foundation of Jewish identity. And you are mistaken if you think this is not about Jewish hatred. I'm thankful for, Jewish, uh, for Jews like Rabbi Malamud and Yonatan Behar, who's here tonight, a representative of, of uh, Har Bracha. Stand up, Yonatan. Yonatan. This community, uh, some call an obstacle to peace, reached out their hands to a person like me whose ancestry is stained with the innocent blood of Jewish people and opened their tent to invite me and thousands more like me to participate in the greatest comeback story of all time. It's time for all of us to recognize the moment. We've been privileged to live in and then 
For God's sake, do something. Amen. Amen.